Hey, hello, how is this weather? Oh my God, it's so cold. You don't want to see the socks that I have on this morning. Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne Peard and this is your social media show. Today, I've got a few different tips and tools that I would love to share with you. So this week, working with clients, it's very easy for me to just say, do this, do that, um, you know, go ahead and create a YouTube channel, this and that. And all the time I see the look in my client's eyes where they go, wow, how am I going to fit that into my already busy, busy, busy schedule? So today I thought we'd share or I'd share with you a few tips to overcome business overwhelm. So what is business overwhelm? Well, that's when you have more things to do and that you don't already have the time to actually access and do the tasks that you need to do. So the first step that I would love to share with you is break it down. We've all heard of the saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So it's really, really overwhelming to look at everything that you need to do in your business, especially when it comes to social media, content creation, repurposing content, YouTube channels, SEO, blogs, blah, 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 blah. So the first thing is to do the first thing to do is to speak English. The first thing that you need to do is break that task down. So for example, if you're wanting to create a YouTube channel, what would be the first thing that you need to do is to sign up with Gmail, open up your YouTube account, do your header. See, we're starting to break it down into little steps. You don't need to do the whole thing in one sitting. So divide your tasks into milestones uh, so that they're manageable and that they're chunked down enough so that you can actually see yourself moving towards that end goal. Strategy number two is account for your time. This involves tracking your time. I remember when I was working for an accountant uh, many years ago and we used to have to track our time in 10 minute intervals because that time was charged out to that client. So that's a bit of an overkill for us in business, but let's have a look at your time and what's actually making you money. So, um, is spending time doing the admin profitable to you at this stage? Or, you know, going and having that meeting, is that going to be a good use of your time? Is it a realistic expectation of how you should use that time? And if you do, then how long are you going to spend there in that meeting uh, and not actually waste time. So have boundaries around that. Strategy number three is ensure that your price reflects your workload. Oh my God, how many of us actually uh, don't do this one effectively? And that is having a good idea. Like, again, I will share a story. Yesterday, I was spending some time with a client and we were taking a MOV file into an MP4 file. I know that might be speaking double Dutch to you, but it took us around three hours to work out which apps to download, how to convert it easily for her, do we transfer it to the computer? And in the end, the answer was just do a Facebook Live and it'll already already be encoded in the MP4. So, you know, are you are you actually spending the time and does your price reflect the workload? Uh, if it takes you two to three hours to do something, are you charging the right amount of money? And that got us into a conversation yesterday about, you know, social media managers, etc., and how um, it does take a lot of time to create content, but sometimes the the manager is not charging accordingly for that time. I'm sure you get that un understanding. Strategy number four is how do you simplify the things that we're already doing? And like yesterday, you know, downloading, uploading, converting, um, reformatting and all these tasks were not simple. The simple answer was just to do a Facebook Live download and upload. So um, that will help you if you look at simplifying your tasks, that will help you manage what you're already doing and look at tools. We're in a the you know the IT environment, the social media environment, the technology environment. There are so many tools that can actually you can use that will simplify and enhance the tasks that you're actually looking at, at achieving. Strategy number five is delegate or outsource. 
So if you don't have time to do it, it sometimes works out more effective to outsource to somebody who does have the time. So you can outsource to sites like Fiverr.com. It's not $5 anymore, by the way. Um, there's Task, uh, Airtask, Airtask, which is an app here in Australia. You could use Upwork. You could get a VA for a couple of hours a week. Um, you could delegate your task to somebody else in your business. Now, that's the biggest struggle that I see with business owners is they go, it's easier for me to do it than to get somebody or train someone in my team to do it. Well, a little bit of uh, insight on training. If you train them effectively to do that task, then you won't have to retrain them and it will save you time. So how do you actually delegate and outsource your tasks? Strategy number six has to be my favorite. And honestly, it took me a long time. Hi, Charity. Um, it took me a long time to actually develop and have courage to implement this strategy. And that is speaking a very small, tiny word that has two letters. And that is no. So as business owners, we often want to please all our customers and do everything we possibly can. And if we have a look at the other strategies that I've just mentioned, then sometimes it doesn't align with those uh, strategies or it doesn't align with our own core values. So sometimes we need to say, no, I'm not free Monday at nine o'clock because I have a set task that I need to do. And that could be just creating a YouTube, just creating YouTube video. YouTube videos are very, very important. So it's it's in creating content for your business. So you need to say no. If somebody says to you, can we have a cup of coffee? And again, I'm really, really guilty of this. Sure, I'll come and have a cup of coffee with you and spend two hours and you can pick my brain for nothing. No, you need to say no or that appointment is worth X amount of dollars to you. So we need to have the assertiveness to turn around and say no, because again, we need to look at where we're going with our business and what we want to do. Now, the next strategy, strategy number seven is keeping the end in mind. Um, the key influence or, or the um, I can't remember the name of the book now. I've forgotten it. Anyways, it'll come back to me. So keeping the end in mind is where you actually always focus on the end results. So for many of us, we think, okay, there's my goal. I want to um, earn $50,000 in my online store this year. Um, and we sort of put it out there to the universe or whatever. And then we go back to, to getting bogged down in the, the tasks and not making the manageable chunk sizes. But in actual fact, we need to keep focusing on the end goal because the end goal is where we're going. And you can use that for your own personal um, goal setting as well. You know, if you have an end goal of X, Y, Z and your life is not moving in that way, well, stop, reset and start again. OK, so I hope that this has helped you. And and what I've used in the past, oh, keep a no charity that was not what I was thinking but that is a very very good um, book and I do have that here which I can share um, charity said the key person of influence no that wasn't what I was thinking um, I've got it now it was the seven habits of highly effective people which was a course I did and that talks about always having the end in mind um, so thanks for that charity that prompted me to actually get the right answer. But what I wanted to share with you is when I was business coaching personal trainers around Australia, what we used to use was this bad boy. Now, this is a one page business plan. This is really just chunking down all those big tasks into just bite sized strategies and then having those strategies Underneath that listed the tasks. So today I thought if you would like a copy of the one page business plan, all you need to do is just, um, you know what to do, put the word plan, P-L-A-N, lowercase, because if you put uppercase, it won't work. Um, use the word plan down the bottom there and you can get access instantly through my uh, fabulous little messenger bot. It always looks the wrong way, doesn't it? Um, and get access to this one-page business plan and really start chunking down 
um, the tasks and the strategies and the goals. And really, it is a one-page business plan. You put where you are now, you put where you want to be. You can list your strengths and weaknesses. You can do the endpoints of how you will know that you're successful. Um, and you can also do things that you want to implement in the next three, six or 12 months. So for me at the moment, and I did this this morning, that's what prompted me to do a Facebook Live because I was like sitting here thinking of all the goals that I want to achieve and I felt like I was spinning my wheels and I thought, wow, just grab this plan, write it out. It's up on my wall now. I can see what I need to do daily. I can see what I need to do weekly and it keeps me on track. And it's and as a visual person, I can look at it and not have to, you know, find everything I need to do. And from this, what you should do then is put the strategies or the tasks into your diary. So if you um, want to go on TikTok every day, then... TikTok from 8 to 9 o'clock every morning and create content. And that should help you all keep accountable. Um, Charity said she was going to say that next. Thank you because I'd actually lost my train of thought. So, guys, hopefully this helps if you're watching it live. Hi, Charity and everybody else. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. And if you're watching the replay, just use the word plan and you'll get a copy of this bad boy and this will help you keep on track, whether it's for your business, your personal goals, your social media goals, I'm not sure. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.